Virtual Desktop is an amazing app that allows you to play all your PC VR games wirelessly on your standalone MetaQuest 3. So, I'm going to show you how to install Virtual Desktop in two easy steps. Then I will go through what I think are the optimal settings to maximize your experience in VR with this app. And I might get a bit technical with the different codecs at the end. So, if you enjoy all the cheeky geeky stuff, make sure to stay till the end of the video for that. Excited? I know I am. So let's get straight into it then. And remember, we're born to respawn. Before we start, I will be focusing on how to install and set up Virtual Desktop on my brand new MetaQuest 3. But this process works with the original Quest, Quest 2, Quest Pro, Pico Neo 3 Link and Pico 4 as well. OK, let's get into it. Step 1. Open the Meta Store on your Quest headset, search a virtual desktop, purchase and install it. The app is currently on sale for $14.99 in the UK, but you can get a 25% discount if you use my referral code, which I've linked down below. I'm going to say this because I get asked every time I make one of these videos. You must buy the MetaQuest version of Virtual Desktop from the MetaQuest Store, either in headset or via the phone app. This is the only version that allows wireless game streaming to your standalone Meta headset. This applies to all Pico headsets as well. Step 2. Go to the Virtual Desktop website here and download the Streamer app. This clever piece of software fools your Quest headset into thinking it's directly connected to your PC by using a virtual server. That is a very simplistic explanation, but I'm a simple man. So there. And that's it. You can now play any of your Steam, Oculus or Viport games wirelessly on your MetaQuest 3. How easy was that? The next stage is to start optimizing virtual desktop settings for your setup. So we'll start here with the Streamer app. On your desktop, click on hidden icons, highlight the Streamer app tab, right click and open settings. Accounts. Click change, then input your Oculus, Pico and Viport usernames. Options. Copy the settings I have here, but I will be coming back to the preferred Kodak later, so make sure to watch the video till the end for that. One important box that needs to be ticked is automatically adjust bitrate, which was recommended by the developer Guy Godin, as shown below. Videos. This tab allows you to add any videos that you have on your PC, which you can watch on a giant screen in VR. Finally, the About tab, which details your PC specs and allows you to check for interfering apps Click that and check your firewall, antivirus or other overlays aren't getting in the way. You can also check the version number in the bottom left corner to make sure you're running the most up to date version. That's it for the streaming app. For now, let's pop on your headset and go through the most important settings. If it's your first time using virtual desktop, you may get a brief spoken tutorial. Computer tab. Look at the top left. It will show the PC you are connected to and your connection speed. Wi-Fi 5 should be up to 866 megabits per second. Wi-Fi 6 should be up to 1200 megabits per second. And if you're lucky enough to own a Quest 3 and a Wi-Fi 6E router, you should be getting a brain melting 2400 megabits per second. Go to the settings tab and uncheck the use optimal resolution. I use twin 4K monitors and this really messes with your desktop resolution. The other settings you can leave as is. Streaming tab. This is the important one is where you can fiddle with the settings to optimize your PC setup. But don't be intimidated. If it all goes Pete Tong, you can just hit the reset to defaults button in the lower right corner. VR graphics quality. Simple this one. Just pick the setting nearest to your GPU spec. I was previously running an RTX 2080 Ti, so had it on medium. However, I have just upgraded to an RTX 4080. So, Godlike. I'm such a child. Sorry. VR frame rate. I run at 90 frames per second, so that's what I'd recommend for now. You can always go back and change it later. VR bitrate. If you have checked the automatically adjust bitrate tab on the streamer app, virtual desktop will set this according to your network's Wi-Fi strength. Sharpening. I leave this at the default 75%. Gamma. Again, leave it at the default 1%. Synchronous Space Warp or SSW. If the frame rate drops below a critical mark, SSW automatically renders only half of the frames and every second frame is generated artificially. This is a very simplistic explanation for a very clever process, so leave this checked for now. Snapdragon Game Super Resolution. Another ingenious technique which automatically upscales an image to increase detail. Make sure this is checked. Video Buffering. 
This can reduce micro stutters, but adds latency. My preference is to uncheck this box. Center to play space, I leave this unchecked. Track controllers, checked. Increase color vibrancy, checked. Increase video nominal range. I think this makes dark spaces way too dark, as I show in this Half-Life Alex quarantine example. So I leave this unchecked. Show performance overlay. This is a great tool for fine tuning your settings in real time. Use this to see where your system is bottlenecked, which I will show you in the next section. And that's it. Please bear in mind, these are my settings optimized for my PC setup. Everyone's system will be different. So maybe use these as a base for setting up your PC and then fiddle away to your heart's content. Remember, if it all goes wrong, just hit the reset to default tab. Now we've got everything dialed in, we're going to take a deeper dive into the streaming app codex and use the performance overlay tab to fine tune for perfect wireless gaming. The recent 1.29.3 update has added AV1 10-bit codecs specifically for NVIDIA 40 series graphics cards, which is brilliant as I've just upgraded to an Asus Republic of Gamers Strix 4080OC. So I will be running that codec alongside my older RTX 2080 Ti to compare the performance. Additionally, with the brand new MetaQuest 3, we can now use the latest Wi-Fi 6E technology. I've purchased the TP-Link AXE 75, as it's known in the EU, or AXE 5400, as it's known in the UK. So my maximum transfer rate is an eye-bleeding 2,400 megabits per second. Okay, that's all the technical gubbins out of the way. Let's see how these codecs perform. I'm playing Half-Life Alex on my RTX 2080 Ti with in-game graphics set to high, virtual desktop graphics set to medium, and bitrate set by virtual desktop at 200 megabits per second. H.264 codec. Latency doesn't exceed 44 milliseconds with a pretty steady frame rate hovering around 86 to 90 frames per second. And you'll see the frame rate counter shows yellow when SSW is active. Perfectly playable with great visuals and stutter free gameplay. H.264 Plus codec. This codec allows the bitrate to jump up to 400 megabits per second, so we should have slightly higher latency as Virtual Desktop is working harder to decode the extra graphical grunt, but it still never exceeds 44 milliseconds with a similar frame rate of 86 to 90. HEVC generally gives better graphical performance than H.264, but with a marginal increase in latency, but it never exceeds 49 milliseconds with a steady 86 to 90. HEVC 10-bit, a more modern codec than HEVC, latency briefly spikes above 50 milliseconds during explosion, but is steady at 47 milliseconds with a frame rate of 86 to 90. Same as all the other codecs. Before we move on to the AV1 10-bit codec and my RTX 4080, I decided to go a bit mad and run my RTX 2080 Ti on H.264 Plus on godlike graphics with video buffering enabled just to see what happens. The results were quite surprising with latency never exceeding 59 milliseconds and a pretty rock solid 90 frames per second throughout. Virtual desktop is amazing, don't you think? Now, the daddy, the Asus Republic of Gamers Strix 4080 OC with Half-Life Alex in-game graphics set to Ultra, virtual desktop graphics set to... Godlike. I know, sorry, I am a child. Running the AV1 10-bit codec at 200 megabits per second. Latency is higher at up to 59 milliseconds as expected due to the jump in graphical fidelity, but the frame rate was a rock solid 90 frames per second throughout. What you can't see though is how incredible Half-Life Alex looks in these settings as all footage was recorded in headset as previously stated and doesn't do the game justice in VR. I was blown away by the fidelity, small objects Hop with detail. The environments were incredibly clear and sharp with jaw-dropping lighting. The sequence where you obtain the flashlight was a particular standout moment. Even more creepy and scary than I remember. Just astonishing. The thing is, virtual desktop just keeps getting better and better as the developer, Guy Godin, is continuously tweaking and updating his app with better features and performance. In conclusion, virtual desktop is an essential purchase in my opinion. Being able to play any PC VR title wirelessly on your Meta or Pico headset is a peerless, liberating experience. If you are lucky, like me, and have access to a MetaQuest 3, an RTX 4080 GPU and Wi-Fi 6E, it just goes beyond the bounds of incredible. That little headset just may be the best headset at the best price currently available, and has reinvigorated my love of PC VR. Right, 
that's it. I'm off to play some more Half-Life Alex. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. At the end of November, I will be giving away this 120 gigabyte Pico 4 headset to my channel members. Plus there are weekly gift card and game key giveaways to boot as well as other perks like a shout out in every video I publish and exclusive badges and emojis. So please consider joining my channel membership. It only costs £1.99 per month. And who knows, this headset could be yours. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.